And there's really nobody better to be our first speaker to kick that off uh, than someone who I met uh, in the course of my work with a company called GE, you've probably heard of. Uh, at the time I started working with them, I, I didn't know GE that well. I had to look them up to see where they were in the Fortune 500 ranking uh, number four. <laughs> I was like, oh, okay. That's not like, you know, they don't make $4 billion a year. They're number four in the world. So, okay, this is a very large company with hundreds of thousands of employees. Uh, and our next speaker at the time that I first started working with GE was the head of the Global Research Center for GE, effectively the chief technology officer of the whole company. Uh, and I think it's safe to say was a little bit skeptical about the possibility of some kid from Silicon Valley coming in and telling GE what's what, you know? And I, I actually honor him for that skepticism. I appreciated it. It was very helpful. And over the course of several years working together uh, on the program that GE wound up calling FastWorks uh, had a tremendous impact on the company. So I hope you will join me in welcoming our very first speaker, um, former head of the GE, uh, yeah, of Global Research Center at GE, my good friend Mark Little. Thank you, Eric. Thank you very much. Hello, everybody. It's terrific to be here with you today. I want to talk to you about Lean Startup at GE. Eric told you GE is a big company. I think you know that. These are the businesses that make up the company. Each one is a global giant in its own right. It's number one and number two in its industry and getting stronger every day. We spend about $5 billion a year on innovation. It's the heart and soul of what keeps our company great. So we are dedicated to innovation. The G Global Research Center is the first industrial research laboratory founded in the United States back in 1900. The founders of the company believed then, as we believe now, that innovation and great technology are at the heart of a great industrial company. We've been building out our resources around the world ever since, and there are about 50,000 technologists in the company. The first research center was in upstate New York. There were two original sites in the company, one in Schenectady, New York, one in, in Lynn, Massachusetts. And out of the center in Schenectady came the idea of forming the first industrial research lab. And that's where the lab was for the first 100 years. We've spent the next 15 years building out all around the world. You can see we have places in Bangalore, India, Shanghai, China, Munich, Germany, back in the US, here in the Silicon Valley area for software, in Oklahoma for oil and gas, in Rio de Janeiro, in Israel, and even outposts in Japan and Russia. So we're everywhere in the world trying to tap the best people that we can get a hold of to drive innovation to the great company. I want to talk to you about FastWorks and what a difference it's made to our company. FastWorks is a term that we use to talk about driving speed and effectiveness into our company. And you can see at the heart and soul of it are the principles of Lean Startup. The idea here is that we use this to get closer to our customers, that we drive speed to market, which we know is a competitive advantage, that we use this to win in the marketplace, which is at the end of the day what we come to work for, and we want to make it easier for all our people to get their job done. We tend to be complex. We want to be simple. We've spent a lot of years driving very detailed customer requirements and not enough time on customer validation. We've spent a lot of time with thinly spread teams. We want to have much more closely knit, dedicated teams. And we, we've spent a lot of time also on doing what we said we're going to do, and that is focusing on activities really rather than doing the things that are most important to learn to take us to the next step forward. This is the story of how Eric and I met. Back in 2012, we were launching a product called Series X. It's a big diesel engine kind of a thing. It's not a piece of software. So this takes building factories, building a lot of hardware, setting up a lot of things that take time and effort and precision to do, do very well. The schedule that we were on, you can see, was a six-year schedule. And every time we'd talk to our CEO, Jeff Immelt, he would show great disgust at the slow pace at which we were proceeding. And he got to the point, he used to just joke with us and say, please just lie to me and tell me it's going to be faster than this. I can't stand it. So my great friend, Beth Comstock, vice chair of GE, found a guy in Silicon Valley, Eric Reese, and she brought him to our GE officers meeting at our training center in Crotonville in New York. And Eric came in, and there were guys like me who are just about twice Eric's age, and seasoned officers, done a lot of product development, won in the marketplace. And Eric came in front of us in a, in a kind of smallish meeting room. There were about 20 of us and one of him. And we're looking at Eric and saying, 
this guy is about the age of our kids. He hasn't done half of what we've done. What the hell is he going to tell us about anything? But he told us a lot. He told us all the principles of Lean Startup, which you know very well and you'll be spending your time talking about. And that started a transformation for me personally and for our company that has really been profound. And you can see in this first product, we went from a cycle where we would have our first product in the marketplace six years later to one where we had minimum viable products out in the marketplace. And we've had orders for, in the early days, 50 machines that we didn't think we'd ever have a chance of getting an order for because we're willing to try, adapt to customers' needs, learn. And now we're building up a very large business around this very thing. I want to show you some examples, not because I want to take you through all the ins and outs of GE, but I just want to show that this is a very real thing for us. Here's something called a multi-phase flow meter. It's a very high-tech device. It measures oil, gas, water flows from wells. They could be on the surface, they could be subsea. It's a very complicated device. And we wanted to ultimately build a system that is very accurate and can measure these flows with great precision, which is what our customers need. And that would require lots of technology we didn't have on hand. Using the principles of Lean Startup, we took what we did have on hand, adapted it a little bit, and put it in our customers' hands. And we've been getting orders as we go along here. We've got a business now that went from nothing to about $100 million, and it's very, very profitable. It's a nice internal startup. And you can see what our customer is saying about the way that he and his team have worked with GE, again, using the principles of Lean Startup to get customer input and validation every step of the way. Here's a different thing on a very high end of the spectrum. This is a very large gas turbine. It's a 500 megawatt scale gas turbine. A power plant built around that would certainly be bigger than the size of this room. You might have to pay half a billion dollars for one plant built to this technology. And here we had a cycle, again, very, very long cycle, heavily focused on getting requirements right and putting at the back end a product that would meet all customer needs. We brought this team, which was one of our pilot teams, again into our training center in Crotonville, and introduced them to Eric. And they were extremely skeptical. The meeting started off actually in an ugly way. I was arguing, you may remember this, I was arguing with them that the only output of the meeting had to be a reduced cycle time. And they were saying, I can't do it. There's no way possible. This is stupid. It's a waste of time. And then literally three days later, they came through the end of the meeting. They were totally energized. They had ideas of minimum viable products, even for a $500 million power plant that made a difference. And the power of this thing is such that before we started this, customers, and I grew up in GE's energy business, customers that I had known for 15 years were telling me, your product stinks. It's no good in the marketplace. So now those same customers are telling us, you've listened to us. You have the best power plant. We're winning market share to beat the band. A complete turnaround in the way we do business here. Here's another example for healthcare in India. We've got a team of about 1,500 technologists in India who are passionate about bringing technology to their country for the low-cost needs that their customers have. So we got them all focused with the marketing people and with their customers. This is a C-arm. So this is a, an X-ray machine on a big C that can move around a body on a, on a bed like that and take pictures with X-rays of a body from many different angles, giving you very rapid results on how to read what's going on with an individual. So the teams got together. They adopted these principles quite nicely. They had 11 MVPs out before you know it, and they're really focused on speed in the marketplace, and this has taken hold. And this has now blossomed into a business run by one of my colleagues, Terry Bresenham, to spread this very kind of low-cost focused technology using lean startup principles all across Southern Asia. Here's Industrial Solutions. This is about an, as old line of product as you could possibly imagine. These are like circuit breakers, industrial versions of what you have in your home to change the electrical uh, setup that you have. We hadn't done anything in this business for many, many years. We put aside a team. We built in the, the Lean Startup principles. And you can see that our own cycles were very slow, and our competitors' cycles were slower still. And using Lean Startup, we are well down the road of having a 30-month cycle versus cycles that in the industry have been twice that long. And this is going to reposition this business entirely. And here's a different kind of a thing, but a good example of an internal startup. And there are a number of these inside GE. This is not an old line technology. It's a brand new thing. It's silicon carbide power electronics. It's very high end, sophisticated technology. 
We know from talking with customers that we have the best technology in the world in this area, highest efficiency, lowest cost, best power ratios. This has applications across healthcare, transportation, aviation, every GE business. We're building on a platform here with the state of New York. We have a $250 million investment going in, and it's using, again, every principle of Lean Startup to build a fast, focused, dedicated team, getting to market. We've already got product and now have had for a couple of years in our customers' hands. They're trying it, telling us what we need to change, and we're adapting as we go. So how do we build this out across GE? We took it very seriously. Once we got to understand that it actually works, even for a big company like GE, we train the leaders of these big multi-billion dollar businesses to the extent that they need to know it to support it. We built up a, a team of 150 coaches to go around the company and work with the much smaller teams. And we have literally hundreds of FastWorks product, projects and growth boards that allocate the resources, again, using Lean Startup methodology. So just some thoughts in closing here. In a big company like GE, people want to get lots of funding, get all the money allocated for a multi-year program. We've switched that around to giving them secure funding, but for a shorter period of time. So they use the money to go and find out what their leap of faith assumptions were that were right, that are wrong. They do their pivots, and they continue to proceed. And we fund them as we learn. The programs are justified and ex ready to execute as a backup to enable us to pivot. We take away the pressure for these teams worrying about what comes next and delaying projects to keep their own jobs and, and lifeline afloat. We give them confidence in our ability and support for pivoting. We have our cross-functional resources very well aligned and better connected, and we're trying to focus on dedicated teams as opposed to teams that are scattered all over the place. And the culture has gone from one where we feel from the top to the bottom that everything has to be perfect from start to finish to one where we recognize that change is inevitable and we accept that as part of doing business. So that's the story of Lean Startup in GE. I'm very proud to say it's made quite a difference. Are we perfect? Absolutely not. Are we continuing to learn? Yes, I hope so. We'll continue to stay involved with our customers and to work with folks like you on adapting and growing and refining these principles. Thanks for having me here today. And Eric, thank you for all you've meant to GE and our company. Appreciate it.